over to the cloud. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us for the Montana State Library website chat. Um, my name is Amelia Kim. I am a lifelong learning librarian and I'm filling in for Joe Flick today. Uh, we have with us Jenny Stapp, the Montana State Librarian as per usual. And we are also joined by Randy Tanglin, who is the Executive Director at Humanities Montana, as well as Jessica Edwards, who is the Data Coordinator at the State Library. And both of them will be talking later on to give you all some information so they can introduce themselves further then. Um, a couple of things before we start. This uh, webinar is being recorded and will be posted to our Vimeo channel later on. So you can watch it, share it, um, and do all those things. I'll be sending out the recording link on Wired later today once I get that uploaded. Um, so it'll hopefully be available by then. And I will also be monitoring the chat box throughout the webinar. So please do feel free to put any thoughts, questions, or comments that you'd like to share. Um, and I will bring that up for the group. I will also be putting in a couple of links into the chat box. Um, so please look there as well. Uh, I do have a few announcements before I hand things over to Jenny. Um, this is a link to the Vimeo uh, website chat showcase. Um, so you, I believe the past four or five sessions are kept on here. Um, so you can go back through and watch and this is where I will be uploading the new session. Um, so there's a link that for there. Um, and then this is just a few announcements about training. There is the virtual fall workshops happening from November 17th through 18th. Um, there are COVID meetups that are happening. There's now two of them, actually. There's the bike weekly meetup for public librarians. Our next one is happening on the 18th at 3 p.m. And then there's also going to be school librarian meetups. We haven't yet scheduled the next school librarian meetup. I believe that will be happening sometime in September, but keep an eye out for an announcement about that on Wired. Um, and then also the Association for Rural and S S Small Libraries. <laughs> I was like, oh, I think that's what the S stands for, um, is having their virtual conference from September uh 28th to october something i can't see it behind my october october 2nd um so we've awarded 25 grants to librarians but anyone is welcome to sign up um, on their website so if you want more information about that please feel free to reach out and then afterwards we're hosting follow-up meetings to discuss some of the topics um, so feel free to reach out to me or joe if you want information on any of that stuff um, so let's see, for today's agenda, we're gonna have a quick update uh, from Jenny uh, about the State Library Commission meeting. Um, then Randy will talk about Humanities Montana and we'll get to meet her. And then Jessica will talk about data, which is important and great. So Jenny, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Amelia, thanks for hosting. I wanna do a shout out to Amelia who's giving up some of her vacation time to help host the meeting today. She's actually joining us from Missouri. So thanks Amelia for doing that. We appreciate you so much. Um, I heard it's hard to hear me. Can you hear me okay now? It's getting a little windy out. I'm trying to sit outside and the wind is picking up. So if it gets bad, I'll, I'll move inside. Uh, I'm just gonna sh quickly share my screen so that um, have a chance to remind you about some of the resources that are available from the State Library website when we talk specifically about the Commission meeting. Can everybody see the agenda from this week's Commission meeting? Yes, I can see it, Jenny. Uh, people are still saying it's a little hard to hear you. I don't know if it's possible to like, I don't know, hold your computer a little closer to you or maybe that might help, but Seems that? Any, any better? I am, I'm not having any issues. Beth said that she turned the volume way up. Um, and if you're listening on a headset, you might want to unplug and plug back in again. That might be, that might be helpful. Um, but hopefully that's a bit of an improvement. Okay. Do let me know again if you have trouble hearing me. Okay. I'll keep an eye out. Thanks. 
Thanks, Amelia. So as I like to do, I always want to give an update from the commission meeting. The commission held their August meeting this week via Zoom. That meeting was recorded and the recordings will be available online. We have two new commissioners that I'm really excited about. Uh, the first is a gentleman named Dalton Johnson. Dalton lives in Missoula. He is a master's of public administration student at the University of Montana and works for the city of Missoula in their human resources office. Uh, he recently served as a student representative from UM to the Board of Regents. So he has experience serving on important statewide boards. I'm really looking forward to his engagement, particularly around topics of how we help libraries more closely engage with your local governments on issues of public administration. And then the second new commissioner is certainly no stranger to any of us. Connie Behe, the director of Imagine If Libraries, is our newest commissioner um, joining Dalton. Both of these new commissioners attended their first meeting on Wednesday. They'll be going through some additional orientation. And just a reminder that the commissioners are appointed by the governor. They serve for three year terms and Dalton and Connie are replacing Ann Kish and Aaron Lafromboy who went off the commission this summer. So very grateful to Ann and Aaron for all of their hard work. They both served on the commission for six years and happy to welcome Connie and Dalton to the commission. Um, commission materials are available again from the State Library website. Let me uh, move my navigation around. Um, if you just go to msl.mt.gov, um, you'll see the link to the commissions and councils and to the State Library Commission with links to the agenda and the documents that they reviewed and the reports that they heard. In particular, the August meeting is when we do a lot of our annual work planning with the State Library Commission. So it was a chance for our staff to share accomplishments from this last year and to talk about the priorities for the coming year. Uh, and I wanted to just take a, a moment to draw your attention to the publications page for the State Library website. I'm just going to scroll up here. Um, again, if you come from the State Library homepage under About the Library and Publications, you'll see a, a number of the various dashboards that I'm referring to and that Jessica is going to refer to in just a little bit. Uh, in particular, we have a dashboard where we document our work plan priorities as an agency and the status of our work. This is a great tool for us to do planning as well as to communicate to our stakeholders and our commission about the work that we're doing, the resources necessary to do that work um, uh, and how successful we are. You'll see this work plan update for October to reflect uh, the FY21 work plan priorities. Uh, and uh, again, these are the priorities that staff reviewed with the commission uh, at the meeting this week. Uh, in particular, we spent quite a bit of time talking about our COVID response and the rollout of the hotspot program as well as Read Squared supporting online summer reading. Uh, it's really heartwarming to start to hear the positive experiences that libraries are seeing as you begin to circulate those hotspots with your patrons and some of the benefits uh, of having access to an online reading program like Read Squared. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that information that's available from the commission page. You'll certainly be hearing more and more about our different work plan priorities as we move into this next fiscal year, our continued COVID response as we work to roll out additional hotspots as well as tablets and iPads uh, to help you help your patrons conquer the digital divide that we're experiencing during um, this pandemic. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to mention is just a, a status update on House Bill 633 and the study that the legislature is conducting into state library funding. Um, you've heard me speak about this study. It's being conducted by a subcommittee of the Legislative Finance Committee looking at how to fund the state library, different revenue sources uh, that might further diversify the funding that's available for the state library. Um, that committee is continuing to meet. Their next meeting is this coming Monday, August 17th. They've proposed a couple of just different sources of funding and associated legislation that would help enhance some of our geographic information services work to support 911 and other kinds of GIS needs within your communities. And then uh, they're also discussing a fixed cost that would grow the overall state library budget. Uh, and we've proposed using some of those dollars to help support broadband needs, as well as a variety of different kinds of statewide projects that we support. The interim of, is of course nearing its end as we come upon the 2021 legislative session. So we anticipate in the next couple of months that the Legislative Finance Committee will make its final determinations about what legislation they want to carry forward into this legislative session. Um, despite the pandemic, despite some of the revenue concerns that we're hearing, we continue to hear just very strong support for the State Library and a real commitment from that committee to find ways to further enhance the funding so that we can then further support all of you. So I'll continue to keep you all updated as that work progresses and we'll be continuing to work with the Montana Library Association Government Affairs Committee to talk about how MLA can help support those legislative activities as we get into the next legislative session. going to pause and ask if there's any questions before I introduce Jessica. Nothing in the chat box so far, Jenny, um, but uh, I did drop in the link to the work plan if people would like to click on that and take a look. Appreciate it. Thanks, Amelia. I asked Jessica to join us today to talk about some updates to the public library statistics as well as a new public library statistics dashboard that we're very, very excited about. We had a little bit of a hiatus for a year or so in our ability to support uh, access to the public library statistics that you all submit to us that we in turn submit to the Institute for Museum and Library Services. We lost some of our staff who were responsible for collating all of that data and making the public library statistics tools available to all of you. And some of you will recall that last year we actually granted an exception to one of the public library standards that mandates that libraries use those statistics to help in your overall planning because we didn't have the ability to provide access to that data resource. So I'm just really pleased that we now have Jessica who's responsible for helping collect that data and is doing just a fantastic job creating different kinds of visualization tools that will help you uh, better understand that statistical data, put it in context for all of you, and hopefully make that a really, really useful data resource to help you in your overall planning and evaluation of your work. So Jessica, thanks for joining us. Sure. Um, should I share my screen or Amelia, are you going to share it? Oh, you're welcome to share your screen, Jessica. Okay. Let me go ahead and actually make you a co-host so that you can do that. Yeah, that might just be a little easier. Okay, I believe you should have that privilege now. Mm. Others. Yes. Okay. Give me one second while I find which screen I want to share.
Okay, so you should be able to see my screen with public library statistics on it. Yep. Perfect. Um, so we've revamped the public library stats website a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if anybody remembers there used to be a manual and that was pretty out of date. Um, and so we've gone through and simplified it um, and just cleaned it up and just made some basic updates. So um, if you go to this page and it's under, if you go from our homepage, it's under library development and then public library statistics. And there's just some basic information on it. And then, so these blue links, um, we have Bibliostat Collect, and that is the tool that library directors use um, to submit statistics. So if you submitted statistics for your library last year, this is the same system. Um, and that the FY2020 collection process will probably begin in October and library directors will be notified. Um, we also have Bibliostat Connect, and that is a tool to view and compare data. Um, and library directors have logins for that. And if you need your login, you can always um, send me an email and I can send it off to you. And there are some instructions on how to use that tool because it can be a little complicated the first couple times. Um, and then Bibliostat, or Baker and Taylor, who own Bibliostat, did do a presentation at the most recent MLA. So um, there's a link to that, con that presentation here. Um, and the data elements guide is going to be the list of all the information that we're asking for and a description of them. So I'm going to click over here. So basically some of the details of what, what should be reported there. Um, the data elements list is just a very basic list of everything. So if it's easier for you to print this out and check it off as you enter it or make notes, that's what this is for. And it should also, um, show when things are automatically totaled. So when they're grayed out like here, that's just gonna be totaled automatically by the system. And then we included a couple instruction documents on um, electronic materials and virtual programs and how to count those because those can be a little bit tricky. Um, and so this year is the first year that we're going to ask for stats on virtual programs. Um, and because it is a new thing, um, this is not a required data element. Um, but if you do have the information, we would love to collect it. Um, and there are also, let me see if I can go back here. IMLS, um, who we report this to at the national level, has added 15 questions about COVID-19. Um, and that seems like a lot of questions. 13 of them are yes and no, yes or no, and the last two are just number of weeks. So they just basically want information about like, were libraries closing? Were they still um, offering access to electronic materials or Wi-Fi? So they're very easy questions. So don't let the number 15 scare you. Um, and then down at the bottom, we just have additional links. So those annual reports and charts um, going up to 2016 are still available on our website. They are not updated after 2016. Um, and I'm gonna click over to our dashboard in a second. It's kind of replacing that. Um, we do also have a, um, an Excel file that you can download here directly. And that is 2007 through 2019 data. Um, and then eventually we hope to go back and add older data as possible to this file so you can access the data and it's just um, a basic spreadsheet um, and then you can search for your libraries or compare as you need to but let me show you the dashboard really quick so if you click this link here the montana public library statistics dashboard it's going to take you to this screen um, and when you go to this page our website isn't always the best for displaying these dashboards. So it might be easier to go down here in the right hand corner and click full screen. And based on your, um, your monitor size, your browser, it might look a little funny the first time. So you might need to reload it. And there's a lot of data behind this dashboard. So it might take a little while for it to all load and for you to be able to click around. Um, so we just have a basic snapshot of Montana here and it's comparing to um, the numbers that we have from other states. And over here, there's a map that's based on county and you can click over here to look at the different measures and just see um, how things were broken down county by county. Um, up here on the left, you can click through to year and you can also view per capita instead of just the total numbers. And then under library snapshot, you can actually choose your library. Let's see if it's gonna take a second to load over here. There we go. And same thing, you can choose your library drop down box here and you can go year by year to see how things have changed. Um, 
And there are some data elements that might have been introduced a little bit more recently. So like I think Wi-Fi users and electronic checkouts might only go back to 2013 or 2011. So after that, they might be just a blank box. Um, and over here in library graphs, we have some static graphs. Um, we have circulation, finances, basic library information, programs, and technology. And again, you can choose your library over here on the left. Um, and then you can just view these graphs. And the data right now goes back to 2007. Um, we don't really want to go further back than that for this dashboard because it's gonna get a little cluttered. And even with 2007 in here, it is a little busy. So we might just scale this back to be a rolling 10 years. So it might just be 10 years at a time. Um, and then over here on compare libraries, you can choose however many libraries you want. And then you choose the measures that you want to compare over here. So if you want, physical material circulation. And then you want to choose, I'm just going to choose some random ones wherever my button clicks. And those are going to pull up the libraries here. And this is another one where this is the total number, but you can also click here to view per capita. And the more libraries you have on this screen, obviously the more crowded it's going to be. So just keep that in mind as you're trying to compare libraries. Um, and if you hover over anything, there's going to be a little tooltip that shows you some of the details as well. And this bar is the average bar in the background. Um, and then under national statistics, so um, IMLS offers, um, they have all the data for all the states available. It's not broken down library by library, it's broken down by state. So we collected all that data and we just put it in here so we can see how Montana compares to the rest of the country and the rest of the US territories. Um, and this data only goes through 2018. Um, IMLS is a little bit delayed in giving the data out, so we probably won't have 2019 numbers in here until around this time next year. But um, you can choose states and territories by this drop down like you could on the other screens, or you could just kind of drag and drop away and it will automatically pull them up. And you can choose the measures over here so you can see children's material checkouts. And for 2000, let's see. I think we started collecting children's materials pretty late, so it might not show up for a few. So that was a bad example. So let me choose another one. It's total circulation, there you go. Um, so these are gonna be in alphabetical order, but Montana is always gonna be red. So if you do wanna use this, just always look for the red bars. And if you click away, and it should reset. And again, you can click on view per capita here, um, which is going to give you a better idea of how um, Montana is comparing to other states for some of these. Um, and the last one is data tables. And this is meant to be, um, this is just all the data that's behind the dashboard. As of right now, it's not downloadable directly through this dashboard. Um, there's something with our server setting that's not letting that happen. But all this data is in that spreadsheet that was on the original page. So um, you can access it on that public library statistics page. And then I hope to be able to fix this issue so that you can download it directly from the dashboard as well. But um, we're really excited about this. This is brand new and it's going to change a little bit as we get user feedback, as we discover um, different ways that we can present this information. Maybe it can be a little bit cleaner. Maybe there's stuff that we should be including there. Um, so the look of it might change a little bit, but um, feel free to go in and look around and see how it works for you. Um, and if you have any feedback about things that you should be added, that you think should be added there, or if you notice um, if it's not loading, sometimes things break um, as we do updates. Sometimes things don't get updated all the way. So um, if you do notice anything like that, feel free to send me an email. Um, and yeah, are there any questions on the dashboard? Jessica, maybe if you want to just go ahead and drop your email into the chat box. Um, sure. People can take a look at it there and reach out if they need to. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. There we go. I think you'll agree that it's fantastic. Thanks. Oh, and sorry, I'm, one more thing. Um, you can print a view of this. So if you're... Um, if you want a snapshot of this to show somebody or to embed on your website, um, if you click this download button, you can download it as an image or a PDF PowerPoint. Um, 
so you can um, customize it to your library and then print it for whatever whatever needs you have. And if you are somebody who is using Tableau and you want the framework for this, you can email me at that same email address and I can send it over to you. Yes, uh, there's a, oh, sorry, go ahead. If historical information is available, can you remind us how far the date goes back? So, oh, I think we have back to the 90s that we still need to kind of clean up and um, make a little bit more presentable. Um, I don't exactly remember which year in the 90s, but the issue there is, well, not so much an issue, just it does take time to clean it up because things do change and the layouts change and the reporting systems change. So kind of matching it all together is um, kind of a task that I will be doing, but it's not quite there yet. But if you have a specific year that you do want to look at, um, again, you could just email me and I can kind of pull it out for you and see what we have. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jessica. Um, feel free to put any other questions about uh, this data dashboard um, into the chat box. I did want to go back. Uh, Jenny, um, Beth had a quick question about additional hotspots and if there was any news on that. Uh, there is. So the State Library, in addition to the hotspots that we've already rolled out, will be rolling out more hotspots in September and then depending on funding and availability another round uh, in around December or January. We received, in addition to the, the CARES Act funds, we received a grant from the governor's office to be able to purchase more hotspots as well as HP tablets and iPads and staff are currently planning exactly how many hotspots and tablets will be able to roll out to libraries. We're anticipating um, placing those orders hopefully next week so we can start getting those out the door in early September. Um, and as soon as we know exactly how much funding we have available, we'll be able to determine exactly how many hotspots and, and devices we'll be able to purchase. We're anticipating being able to procure around one hotspot per 1,500 um, citizens. So um, based on the, the number of, of patrons you serve, uh, that, that's our goal for the number of hotspots per library. You bet. So I'm very excited to be able to introduce Randy Tanglin to all of you. Uh, Randy is the new director at Humanities Montana. And of course, the State Library has partnered with Humanities Montana for many years on a wide variety of projects, including the National Book Festival and the Humanities Speakers Bureau and uh, other programs over the years. Randy is a dear friend of mine. We went to college together at Rocky in Billings many, many, many years ago. And I was absolutely thrilled to learn earlier this summer that she was moving back to Montana to take this new role, knowing that we were going to have an opportunity to work together. So um, we jumped at the opportunity to have her join us in this website chat. So Randy, welcome. Welcome back to Montana. Welcome to your new role. I'm really happy to be able to introduce you to the Montana Library community. So thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Jenny. And it's it's just terrific to be here today and to um, be able to, to talk with this uh, community of, of librarians. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background and um, what I've been doing since I left Montana almost 20 years ago. Um, what Humanities Montana is working and focusing on right now and um, some in opportunities, ways that uh, resources that, that we might be able to uh, share with librarians. But um, I moved back to Montana after spending 12 years in a small town in Texas. I was actually born in Sydney, Montana. I don't know if we have any folks on the call today from Eastern Montana and uh, that my parents are, are from Eastern Montana and I spent the first several years of my life there and uh, lived in uh, 
a few different small towns in Montana. I lived in Red Lodge for a while and I graduated from high school in, in Park City and of course went to Rocky Mountain College with, with Jenny. And, um, and I've been teaching at a small college in North Texas for the past 12 years. I've been an English professor there. And from all of these experiences, um, you know, living in small communities, I've come to realize just the resource that libraries are to our communities. Um, not only with providing, you know, literacy and access to, to books and information, but all of the different services that, that libraries provide our communities. And um, especially now at Humanities Montana, I'm so aware of the role of, of libraries in, in our states, keeping our state's um, cultural infrastructure healthy. And um, as a faculty member, I gained a, an appreciation for librarians and protecting our First Amendment rights and our freedom of, of speech. And I really, I really believe so much that uh, the healthy library, a healthy library system is just central to a functioning and healthy democracy. And I think this is especially true in our smaller communities. So thank you for, for all the work that you do. Um, right now at Humanities Montana, since I've started, I just started on June 1, uh, by the way. So I moved back to Montana from Texas in the, the middle of the pandemic. But I'm here now in, in Missoula in our offices at Humanities Montana. And our work these past couple of months has really focused on, you know, as, as you know, and, and as you've been doing in the libraries, responding to, to COVID and adapting our programs uh, in that sense, but we've also been thinking a lot about the national conversations that have been reinvigorated around racism and, and racial inequalities and the role of organizations like Humanities Montana in um, facilitating and being part of those conversations. So first, um, in terms of our response to COVID and the pandemic, some of you might know about our DIY and digital humanities newsletter. This is a weekly newsletter that we started uh, producing every week. Uh, I think in about mid-March, we started with this. And you will find um, that we take turns writing different pieces in that newsletter. So there's a Dear Reader piece that um, members of our staff take turns writing. There's a philosophy section. There are prompts for discussions. Um, and there's always a virtual, there's some type of a video that we've recorded with one of our Montana Conversations speakers or some resource that we've, we've gathered from the National Endowment for the Humanities. And we've received some great feedback on that newsletter so far. Um, anecdotally, you know, I've heard from folks who are using those discussion prompts to start conversations within their family or some people are using the material to supplement um, virtual learning and homeschooling with, with their kids. Um, we had some virtual uh, happy hours, humanities happy hours during the pandemic with our Montana conversation speakers. Those are recorded and they're on the Humanities Montana webpage um, under virtual humanities. Um, and we're currently working, and this is where I think we, we might be able to, to partner with, uh, with libraries. I know many of you have sponsored our Montana Conversation speakers. Uh, we are working with those speakers on creating virtual programs, live virtual programs. And we have temporarily suspended the copay associated with bringing Montana speakers uh, to an organization or to a library because we want to encourage um, these virtual Montana conversations. So if you're interested in that, um, please contact us. You can contact me personally. Um, my email is randy, R-A-N-D-I dot tanglin at humanitiesmontana.org. And I know many of you have worked with Kim Anderson and Samantha Dwyer in our, in our programming. And, and so we're really, we're really encouraging that. And I think um, I know that Belgrade Public Library just had a virtual conversation with Hal Stearns last week. So we're hoping that there will be more interest and further interest in those virtual conversations. We are actually providing a free training for our Montana Conversations speakers. And, and by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar with that program, 
if you go to our website, humanitiesmontana.org, and look under Montana Conversations, you'll see a catalog of speakers, and you'll see a wide range of topics, um, ranging from the environmental humanities, Montana history, women's history, poetry, American Indian history. So um, there, there should be something for kind of whatever type of programming or initiatives that you, you have um, going on in your library. So that's kind of been, we've, we're continuing to respond to COVID. We also have our speakers in the schools program. Some of you may be familiar with that. And that's a little more difficult to plan for because schools, as I'm sure you know, you, you're, you are planning around this too, aren't necessarily sure what things will look like in the fall. Um, and, but nonetheless, we're working with our speakers in that program as well to, to develop some strategies and formats for virtual programs. We're also fully committed in response to the, the conversations around racial equity and anti-racism work. We're committed to amplifying the stories and voices of Montanans of color, those, those voices that have been marginalized and not as represented. And this is going to be ongoing work for our organizations. And I know that many of you working in libraries, you understand that these issues of representation matter. It matters that we see a wide range of stories and perspectives represented in the literature that we read and in the information that we're exposed to. Um, so the work that we've been doing around this has been, um, the first step has kind of been some internal work with some training with our board and with our staff on anti-racism and racial equity work. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to conduct an anti-racism audit of our procedures and our processes here at Humanities Montana and, and um, kind of evaluate our accessibility and develop some strategies for being more inclusive in, um, and to be in that sense, then be more of a resource to more Montanans. Um, and, we would really love to partner with libraries and librarians who are also committed to these conversations and these types of values. Um, we have our opportunities grants for projects for um, less than $1,000. If your library or a group associated with your library wants to have a conversation um, around a book or a topic that deals with this anti-racism work, we would encourage you to apply for an opportunity grant or one of our Big Sky Reads book clubs. Um, but these opportunity grants and these book clubs are not just related to this initiative on anti-racism work. Um, certainly, um, they're open to really any number of topics that, that you or your, your, li your patrons might be, be interested in. And um, this information is all available on our website, or you can just contact us directly, but we would love to, um, to be a resource to you right now, um, just as you're a resource to your patrons and, and to your communities. Um, that's just kind of what we're working on and, and thinking about now. And I don't know if there are any questions in response to that, but I'd certainly welcome you to follow up with me personally. Awesome. Thank you so much, Randy. And just to let everyone know, I did drop her email into the chat box so you can grab it there. Um, and then we did have one question about um, the virtual happy hour and the virtual programs that you mentioned on your website. Um, someone was wondering if we can if we can direct the public to watch those things. Um, or if Absolutely. Okay. Yes, please do. That's why we have them there. And we would actually, we would be incredibly grateful to you if you would, um, if you could or, or would share those through your social media, through your own website, please feel free to, to repost those. Awesome. Thanks, Randy. And Beth says, welcome back to Montana. <laughs> oh, thank you, Beth. Um, any other questions for Randy? Um, I, I th I'm sorry, you mentioned this, but the website is just humanitiesmontana.org, correct? So yes. I'll drop yes. that into the chat box too. Um, I haven't seen anything else come in. Um, Randy, thanks again. So glad you could be with us and feel free to join us anytime. 
I certainly will. Thank you, Jenny. And Gail did say, although the numbers are small because the word is still getting out, we think the virtual programs have wonderful potential and the speakers have been very excited about the opportunity. I believe this is Gail Bacon from Belgrade. So thanks for sharing. Oh, Gail. yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. And, and thank you for all of your, the, the work and collaboration you've been doing with us on that. Right, excellent. Um, I guess I will go ahead and stop the recording for now. I think that's all that we had planned for to 